Hey y'all, it's me, Alpha No, and uh, I'm gonna be doing a different video. I'm gonna be talking about Alpha No's kit. As you might know, he's coming here pretty soon, just about two days at the time of this recording. But uh, his kit is pretty loaded, and uh, I'm gonna need a little bit of assistance here, so I have a very special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Very special guest, he says. How flattering. <laughs> uh, hey guys, uh, Soul here, and well, I'm sure some of you at least know who I am, but if you don't, uh, I make content for DFFOO, mainly focusing on you know gameplay and running kind of quirky team comps. Um, but I do occasionally branch out. I do occasionally do draw videos um, and uh, collapse with other people. And a uh, content creator that I've been watching here for a while now, Alphano, he's, uh, he's a great watch. And uh, so I kind of jumped at the chance to work with him and I'm just happy to be here. So thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm excited to do this with you. Yeah, no problem. And uh, we're gonna be breaking down his kit. So let's go over his uh, kit real quick. So his skill one, it's summon Moonstone. He has five uses. And uh, if you use skill one, it batteries the party and it grants himself a small max brave buff for six turns. And it grants a unique effect Moonstone for six turns. So uh, real quick, Alphanod, well, Alphanod, oh, Alphano only got an EX plus. He did not get a rework. So his base kit is still the same. So after using S1, the unique effect Moonstone, it grants 20% max brave and 20% damage reduction for the party as an aura buff for the party. It dispels if he gets broken or when he grants his EX buff, which we will get into later. While Moonstone is active, his Brave Attack becomes sick, which is two hit magic single target Brave Attack, and it parties the battery based on initial bravery. HP Attack becomes Shining Moonstone. He Brave gains himself based on his initial Brave, and it's a single target two hit Brave and HP Attack with 120% overflow. Now here is where Moonstone gets pretty ridiculous. So with Moonstone, with his Moonstone buff, it triggers one of the following four effects and these are all very <laughs> these are all pretty convoluted and very specific so one of them if his HP is less than 30% then he heals himself for 20% of his max health at the start of his turn if his current bravery is less than 80% of his max brave then he batteries himself by his initial bravery if his current bravery is greater than 80% of his initial bravery but less than and also less than 80% of his max brave, it batteries the party by 50% of initial bravery. If his current bravery is greater than 80%, it grants a buff called Moonshine, and Moonshine offers him 20% attack and overflow for one turn. Uh, additionally, he also starts the quest with six turns of Moonstone. This is a very convoluted, uh, very convoluted. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would I would say that this uh, skill one is uh, easily one of the most convoluted in the game, <laughs> if not the most. It's it's um it's pretty strange how just absolutely loaded and kind of RNG based it is. Uh, yeah, it is kind of RNG RNG in the sense of it's very hard to manipulate his bravery to get the result that you want because these are all very very specific conditions. So if I were to boil it down, it'd just be it just be if his health is low he'll heal himself if his bravery is high he gets a buff otherwise he either batteries himself or batteries the party <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah, that's that's what more what i meant it's like <laughs> where you know some characters you kind of want to manipulate and doing what you're doing and he's just kind of just he just does his thing it's, and, yeah it's um... very specific <clears throat> okay and his skill too oh we're do did you want to finish your thought Nope, no. Nope. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> I kind of cut you, kind of cut you off there. His skill two, energy drain. It has seven uses. Uh, it's a four-hit magic single-target Raven HP attack with 120% overflow. It heals the party up to 20% of their max HP, and any excess healing is converted to bravery. <clears throat> His AA skill, it's called bravery gen all. It has two uses. Uh, with uh, it grants bravery gen. So 40% initial brave, and it boosts the party's initial brave by 10%. So it's a regen-based additional ability. You can have some nice regen memes going on around there. Now, <laughs> his EX skill. <laughs> this uh, It's pretty loaded. Oh, man. Obsidian combination. It's a slow recharge. Uh, 
base the base version of Obsidian Combination is a 6 hit AoE Magic Brave and HP attack with split HP damage and 150% overflow. It has no action delay so he gets his next turn right away and it does not add to the turn count. And at the end of it, he recovers bravery based on 30% of the HP damage dealt. At EX plus limit break 3, the 6 hit AoE magic attack becomes 4 hit AoE magic attack initiated twice. So uh, he can dish out a lot of damage in just a single turn that technically doesn't even add to the turn count. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he uh, he really his EX is is very very powerful, and something something to mention is that that brave that he gets back that thirty percent, that's based on the total damage inflicted. So what I mean by that is let's say you're fighting two chaos bosses, right, and you do, uh, you know, fifty thousand damage to both of them. Well, the game is going to treat that as a hundred thousand damage inflicted. So then you're going to get back, uh, you know, thirty three thirty thousand brave, whatever whatever the number is. <laughs> You'll get that back, which is very, very helpful for him because he always wants to have a nice little steady stockpile of Brave on him. Exactly, especially because uh, he suffers a lot from getting broken, and we'll get into specifics of that later. He definitely does not want to get broken at all. Okay, after yep. using his EX, it dispels the Moonstone unique effect, and he grants a unique effect called Obsidian for four turns, and he also grants a framed buff on himself called Shadow Flare for eight turns. Obsidian the unique effect obsidian it, he grants himself 20 percent max brave and attack up and it, it dispels if he gets broken or when he grants himself moonstone so if he uses his s1 he's going to lose obsidian and his framed buff shadow flare <laughs> it grants himself attack and max brave 60 percent lowers all enemies speed by 10 percent and it deals brave damage based on enemies on the enemy's initial brave at the start of the enemy's turn. So he has a framed buff on himself that functions like poison on the enemies. And that's that's pretty good. If you were to ask me. That is really good. That's really good because you think about uh, especially moving forward, uh, how many bosses like to start cleansing themselves, you know, during certain parts of the fight uh, and and so having or or like we just saw with the uh, latest mission dungeon uh with the chimeras where they like to or, and the uh the griffins where they flood themselves with all these frame buffs well because the effect is on him you don't have to worry about that getting pushed off so it's kind of as long as you have that obsidian buff it's kind of like a permanent poison effect on the entire enemy party makes them useful even on poison immune stages because you still have that poison Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's really, he can, you can take him really in any stage and benefit from that for sure. I mean, that's kind of like a universally helpful effect. Absolutely. While Obsidian is active, Obsidian Carbuncle will do one of the two following actions on Alpha No's turns. It'll grant himself a buff called Obsidian's Radiance for three turns. And if Obsidian's Radiance is already granted, then he just gets Brave Recovery based on an initial Brave at the start of his turn. Obsidian's, Ra Obsidian's Radiance, it's a framed buff, he gets 20% Max Brave Overflow, stolen Max Brave Overflow, and he, uh, it increases his Brave damage on debuffed enemies by 20%. So he can start dealing some really nice uh, uh, HP damage, some shaving, he's really good at it. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that that extra that extra damage. I mean, it it doesn't seem like it's a whole lot, but when you really start looking at his entire kit and all of his auras, I mean, at this point, we'll get more into those auras oh, in a second. Oh, cause my God, <laughs> is, he, is he loaded on those? Yeah, but but when you take all these auras and you really stack them together, I mean, you start seeing some pretty bonkers kind of numbers. I remember when when Rosa first dropped, mm -hmm. you know, in Global, and, you know, everyone looked at her auras, and, you know, our jaws kind of hit the floor. Alphanod's kind of got, like, a little similar thing going where he's so loaded, I mean, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Yep, absolutely. He is very good at auras, and we will get into that later. And while Obsidian Carbuncle is out, his Brave attack turns into Sick Obsidian. It's a 5-hit magic AoE Brave and HP attack. It's split HP damage. It has 150% overflow if he's at limit break 3 on his EX+, plus, and he has brave cash back based on 30% of HP damage dealt. So very similar to that EX, it also has cash back. His HP+, plus, 
turns into Shining Obsidian, 5 hit magic single target Braven HP attack with 120% overflow at, at limit break 3 on his EX+, has 50% splash, it inflicts generic poison and 30% defense down on all the enemies for 3 turns and grants a free skill use on his next turn. So you pair this with Shadow Flare where he deals more damage to debuffed enemies and and uh, it has that poison like effect on it. Well now Alphano also has defense down and inflicts generic poison so he, he kind of has that Sarah double poison tick going for him and he's just going to be shaving real nicely because of that defense down and that increased damage on debuffed enemies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the the double poison I think is is kind of like a low key, um, unheralded part of his kit because uh, I don't use Sarah a whole lot, but when I do, and seeing enemies like at the start of their turn just lose like upwards of ten to twelve thousand brave just by standing there, I mean it's it can mean all the difference. I mean it can mean the difference between them hitting you with a brave attack and them hitting you with an HP attack because it can change their AI completely. So, and then stacking of course his extra damage to debuff targets plus that generic defense down some good stuff right there mm -hmm. and don't forget he also has that uh attack and max brave from obsidian and shadow flare that 60 percent attack and max brave just for being an obsidian carbuncle mode he has that 80 percent attack and max brave going for him and so you got increased brave damage on debuffed enemies you got defense down and he's just going to be hitting out some nice numbers it's it's pretty ridiculous it is it is and I, we, I don't even think we've gotten to the auras yet, which are nope. party-wide, by the way. So, Alfie, if you want to hit that real quick. Oh, his auras. Oh, man. <laughs> this took me. This took a while to get together. Okay. So, altogether, his party auras. His C50 passive Aetherflow boost. It's a party 10% attack and max brave when he's buffed. So, you can get additional 15% from his arts. So, that can go up to a total of 25%. His C68 passive. Is just a it's a flat party attack initial brave 10% boost. His EX plus limit break one offers party attack and max brave 50%. That is a massive, massive jump. <laughs> so that means altogether his total party auras. This is just if he's buffed and he's just chilling in the party, his total party auras are 85% attack, 75% max brave, or 95% with moonstone aura. 10% uh, initial brave and 20% brave reduction if he's in Moonstone uh, Carbuncle. And we uh, and uh, let's head back. Uh, let's backtrack a little bit to his Obsidian Carbuncle. So if you take those into consideration, that 80% attack and max brave and that additional 20% uh, extra damage when he's attacking a debuffed enemy. That in junction with his party auras, that means that Alfie himself has a 165% attack boost and 155% max brave boost while in the while in obsidian mode. So he's gonna be hitting some really high numbers, and these are some really, really strong auras. Yeah, no doubt. And and as we get further, you know, later into chaos, you know, bosses really start buffing themselves sky high with these defensive auras that they do. Um, I mean it's that makes it, it sounds like crazy numbers but he really needs those numbers to really kind of stay viable and it really does help too it does help him out a lot absolutely so uh let's go over his ex plus bonuses real quick because we've been kind of talking about everything in regards to ex plus uh limit break three so his ex plus bonuses just for realizing it limit break zero it increases his ex potency and increases its overflow to 180 percent, so it deals more damage at limit break one it increases the party attack and max brave by 50%, just flat a flat boost. At limit break two, uh, when he, when the quest starts, it grants himself shadow flare for six turns, and it fills the ex gauge to max. At limit break three, obsidian combination becomes a four hit AOE magic brave and HP attack a trigger twice. I brought that up earlier. It has increased potency and 200% overflow. It also turns Sick Obsidian into Sick Obsidian Plus, which is the same thing, but it adds a potency increase and 150% overflow. It turns Shining Obsidian into Shining Obsidian Plus, which again is also just a potency increase and adds 120% overflow. His Sphere, it is a C-type Sphere, 
It is Party Attack and Initial Brave increase by 5% for 3 turns after he grants a buff. It can be any buff, it can be an ally buff, it can just be a buff on himself. Just any buff. Doesn't matter who it's on. <clears throat> now for budget, now that we know all of his limit breaks, for budget, rec for uh, budget, say like you got Ida. Say you were pulling for Ida, but you got Alfie's kit in the meantime. I'm always down for O3 for entropy fodder. I think O3 always works for entropies, especially on the lower levels as we get more summon boards and higher stat increases. But for regular chaos use, if you were to really ask me, I think at bare minimum, he wants one ingot in because that that 50% party attack and max brave is massive. You, you don't want to miss out on that. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I would think this character to me is, is one of two tiers. You either put him at one out of three or you put him at three out of three. His one out of three, that 50% party attack and max brave aura is permanent aura there's no uh you know there's there's no condition for that it's just you put it at one out of three and there you go he could be t-posing in the background and your party's getting boosted <laughs> you go to three out of three now all of a sudden this ex now is doing like you said it's doing four hit uh, aoe brave hp attacks twice and it turns his shining uh sick and his shining obsidian to their plus versions which uh, hit much harder. They have extra overflow. Uh, so I really do think that he he's either one or three. His zero out of three is, you know, it, it is what it is. If you want the ingot, then I guess he can function there. His two out of three is okay. Uh, I do like the EX gauge at max right from the start because that lets you get, um, you know, the obsidian carbuncle right off the bat, which, I, you know, is great. Uh, but for me, uh, personally, um, he would be at bare, 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 bare minimum, one out of three, for sure. For regular chaos use, absolutely. Again, O3 always works for entry fodder. And, yeah. So we just yeah. went over his kit. It's a, it's a very, very loaded kit. <laughs> oh, man. So, Alfie, I, I'd say he's a very versatile character. At, with his EX Plus, he now has two different types of modes. You know, Moonstone Aura, it's a more support-oriented mode. And uh, his Obsidian, it's more DPS-oriented because he has a whole bunch of attack up and all that uh, shenanigans. So, uh, he's a very versatile character. He also has healing, debuffing, some battery. He's very flexible. He offers a lot of utility. So you can pretty much slot him in most team comps. <clears throat> right, I, I agree with you, and I think I think if we're now if we're talking about his strengths, I think his flexibility is definitely one of his strengths, uh, because characters that kind of we and we me and Broadway when we were talking about Arciella, we brought this point up with her, uh, characters that kind of mind their own business and don't clog up your buff slots, but still manage to boost everyone up with auras, are some of my favorite characters in the game because they allow so much flexibility. You can bring in. You know selfish dps characters that really don't offer anything uh you know in terms of auras to the party because you have this one character that's just so absolutely stacked and you're not losing much um you can also use turn stealers with alfie because these auras these auras are constant so if you want to run lightning you want to run vein you want to run you know ultimisha these characters that eat turns like butter right they're still getting these auras from alpha no so uh, he's, he, I think probably one of his absolute biggest strengths for sure is that flexibility. Um, and I also like how, uh, he, with his brave plus his shining sick, um, and then his shining obsidian, those give you a lot of options as well, because his shining sick, as you mentioned earlier, gives you that 30% brave back, which is terrific. I mean, having a brave attack that not only inflicts that HP damage, but you get that brave back. Um, which for any character is nice to avoid breaks, but for Alpha no, it's extremely important because he carries that extra uh, punishment, I guess, for getting broken, which basically just wrecks his whole kit. Like if he gets broken, you're <laughs> you're in trouble for a turn. Um, and then of course his Shining Obsidian. This thing is nuts, Alpha. And I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but when you use the Shining Obsidian, uh, you actually get a free skill use the very next turn. Yeah. So. He not only does he have absolute, you know, 
at crazy longevity because of how strong his Brave Plus and his HP Plus are. But you're now getting free skill uses every time you use his HP Plus, which, by the way, has a 50% splash on enemies. So you're getting this extremely powerful <laughs> attack. It's got 50% splash. You can use it infinitely as long as you have a carbuncle, uh, his um, obsidian carbuncle on. And you're getting free skill uses after every single time you use his HP plus. I mean, this is like this is like the crown jewel of characters in terms of just doing their thing and just doing it forever. Ramza used to be the king of that mountain for me. Uh, now Alfinal kind of just kind of brute forced him off and said, "No, no, it's my time to shine, guy." <laughs> And don't forget, it also inflicts that poison and that 30% defense down, so he's really good at controlling that enemy bravery, and he's really helpful at making you, your party just deal more damage because his auras are just absolutely bonkers. <laughs> yep, exactly, yeah. So yeah, on top of all the auras, and on top of you know the crowd control from all of his AoE attacks, you know he's got the defense down which helps everyone you know having a defense down is universally helpful and then the dual poison effects that's again that can be the difference between a brave attack and a potentially fail hp attack yep absolutely and uh, him having two support modes is also really good um because if you have say imagine there's like a boss recast ability and it's coming up here pretty soon and it's alfie's turn right before the boss's turn who's about to do some massive strong attack well you can just use s1 get that 20 percent brave reduction and then do a brave plus get that battery up so you can just mitigate that damage even more so he has just that he has that option that you can just use and pretty much just reduce damage so you don't have to heal as much 20 percent brave reduction it's not a lot compared to say hope <laughs> whose uh, reduction is i think it's 60 percent but it is an aura buff 60%, yeah yeah, 60%. It is an aura buff, and it is honestly just better than nothing. If you want to be really tanky, bring hope as well. Because <laughs> he has a whole bunch of auras. Alfie has a lot of auras, so he can just work with a lot of generic buffers. Like Pinello, Hope, Beatrix, just all those people who just takes up a whole bunch of buff slots on the party members. If you want to be real tanky, just bring hope, Beatrix. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I really do like um, kind of that ability to on the fly switch stances as as your needs evolve. You know, Arciella does the same thing where, you know, she can have her she can be in her stance one, which is more of a defensive stance. You know, she batteries par uh, brave to the party, whereas she can switch over to S2 and now she has the HP silence. She has the much stronger HP plus available to her, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, like you said, 20 percent brave mitigation isn't a whole lot. Uh, but it is something, uh, one of my favorite things to do when I'm running Hope is to use his 65, which is minus 30% uh, HP damage until it expires. And, you know, 30% isn't a whole lot, but you really do feel kind of big brain when you're seeing Bahamut about to use Mega Flare, and then you use that uh, that 65, and then you just kind of get a big smile on your face. Like, yeah, I, I, I am good at this game. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, I, I definitely... I definitely love uh, Alfano's uh, his flexibility. I mean, I really can't say enough about it. The man is kind of a jack of all trades, and he does them all well. Yep. And, uh, well, now you get to tank Mega Flare from Bahamut with an extra 20% Brave Reduction. So you got 80% Brave Reduction. <laughs> Oh yeah, Alphanar plus Hope, yeah. Oh, that's just that's just stupid. I mean, oh my god, you're not taking damage. And then make Beatrix your third slot, and well, you'll be pushing boss off left and right, but that'd be fun. The boss can attack all but, they want, and they just won't do anything. Yeah, it'll be like punching an iron wall. Uh, but uh, hey, so we, so we talked about his strengths. Now, every character, of course, has their strengths and their weaknesses. So, in your opinion, Alfie, what are some of his uh, kind of biggest strengths that players that are thinking about building him up should be aware of? So, Alphano, he suffers, he still suffers greatly from getting broken. If he gets broken, he loses whatever carbuncle mode he's in. So, if he gets broken to Obsidian, he loses Obsidian. He also loses Moonstone if he gets broken. So, he just does not want to get broken at all. Because it hurts him a whole lot. The last thing you want to do is use his EX and then get broken immediately after and lose it right away. <laughs> that is very, very bad. Additionally, his cashback is only is 30% based on his uh, HP damage dealt. If, a, if uh, a boss's defenses are incredibly high or if his HP damage uh, is pretty low, the cashback is going to be really weak, making it easier for him to get broken. So he definitely does want to be hitting high numbers regardless. 
because that cashback is very, very important, and he does he does not want to get broken at all. Additionally, is Shining Obsidian, the the skill that grants him his free skill use. It does not have Brave Cashback, so it leaves him open to getting broken while getting a free skill use. So you kind of have to be careful about when you want to get that free skill use versus whether you want the Brave Cashback or not. Yeah, he's he uh, you know you don't want any character getting broken in this game but alfano is a character that carries that extra kind of sledgehammer to the gut if he does get broken because what it does is it basically forces you uh to s1 at the very minimum next turn and it kind of messes up his rotation now as you said um you know the, being broken is bad of course um and and plus with high defense if you're not getting as much brave back or you use that hp plus you know you have to be very careful to Get the most out of him because again a break is so bad something else to consider is that if you, he does have healing but it's not super potent so if you're using him as your only healer you might find yourself in a situation where you need to heal the party up but energy drain doesn't really give him any brave back so you might had to have to heal and then you put yourself in a situation where oh god i'm for sure getting broken and then he gets broken and then things go kind of haywire so it's something to yeah, definitely have to consider when you're thinking about using his skill two. You know, the skill two, of course, is going to charge that EX up, but then it carries that risk of he, if he gets broken. There's also some bosses that have kind of insta-break um, tactics. I mean, we're about to see, oh, a very lovely chaos. Uh, oh, man. chaos. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Can't wait to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you just, you have to be aware uh, kind of beforehand when you're going into a stage what the t the uh, mechanics of that stage are because off and on if you bring him to you know the wrong stage uh, he might get slapped around pretty hard that's gonna be harder to kind of get him to his full potential mm -hmm. he does have excess brave from healing but it's not a lot to protect him <laughs> it's not a lot at all uh, he can solo heal in some in certain fights primarily fights that are more brave oriented like in this recent one, the Chimeras, they do a whole bunch of brave attacks and they don't do a lot of HP attacks until the very end. So he could theoretically solo heal. It just depends on the fight itself. Exactly, exactly. And and something I think I think we should definitely discuss as well is, you know, those weaknesses of don't get broken, you know, who can we pair him with that will really help mitigate that? And number one for me. Uh, is tanks. If you pair him with a tank, let's say Snow, let's say Zack, Celeste, you get a provoke tank. All of a sudden, all, you don't need to worry about getting broken now unless you're doing an all attack because now he can just do his thing and they're just going to constantly go after that tank. I love the idea of pairing Alphano with Snow or Zack because those two are going to make Alphano goddamn near uh, invincible, I'd say. Just because, again, unless it's an all attack, you don't got to worry about him getting clapped. Exactly. I was about to say the same thing as well. Tanks are his best friend. <laughs> Anything that prevents him from getting targeted. And uh, heck, if you want to, his auras are amazing. Heck, slap Rosa onto the team. Rosa, Zach, Alfie, to one swole soldier boy. <laughs> yeah. Or or another another uh, you know type of unit you can pair him with are battery characters. One of his fellow scions, uh, Yishtola, is a terrific companion for him because she batteries. She can stand there and she'll battery, right? Uh, EX, Hermetica, massive uh, HP plus, uh, you know, massive amounts of battery going all over the place. And so that supplemental battery will then help him, you know, from his cash backs. Or if you need to use that energy drain or that HP plus, then of course that extra battery can help protect him. Yep, lease also batteries. Fun fact. <laughs> and. Okay, another thing to keep in mind, while he's in obsidian mode, Alfie does not do any party battery whatsoever. So he's unreliable for solo battery. And uh, most of the time he's going to be in that obsidian mode unless you prematurely end it by using S1. So you, because of that, you definitely want to have another battery in the party. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, 100, yep, definitely agree. Yeah, I think a good way to look at him is his white carbuncle is definitely a defensive stance, and then his black carbuncle is just complete, just kind of offense. He can protect himself a little bit, but when he's in that obsidian carbuncle stance, which ideally you kind of want to be in that, and I'd say roughly 90% of the fight, um, you know, you're going to need some help. So you're going to need a designated battery or a tank character to kind of help him out. Absolutely. 
And, uh, yeah, also, uh, another thing to keep in mind, his potencies are a little bit on the lower side because it's it's being uh, offset, offset by the fact that he just has so many auras and so many things boosting his attack. And uh, pretty soon here, in the, in the following month, there's going to be Brave Damage Reduction being introduced, so that's going to hurt Alfie a whole lot more. So some generic attack up or magic attack up from buffers can help can keep Alfie just dealing as much damage as possible. So like Sarah can work still. Uh, who, who grants magic attack up actually? Ash works. <laughs> Ramza. Uh, a big one that immediately comes to mind is Ramza. Ramza's kind of like oh, Ramza. the generic buff or a god right now in terms of support. So he's really, really good and they complement each other very, very well. Absolutely. Ramza and Alfie, just a whole bunch of attack up that you're just, shaving's not going to be an issue, which is why Brave Reduction's getting introduced. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, shit, you'll have, uh, you'll have both uh, Alfie's uh, defense down and then Ramza's frame defense down from his Enervate stacking. So, and then plus all the auras and all the buffs, so yeah, it's, that's some good stuff right there. I like that combination a lot. Mm hmm So, should you pull? This is not this is a should you pull and not the sense of you should get this character or anything like that. This is a should you pull because it's going to be based on your roster whether or not you need this character. So I think the best way in my opinion to sum up Alfie is that he's an aura support that can deal damage. That's how I that's how I would describe uh, Alphano. And so for uh so for some alternate characters, if you want an aura buffer, uh, Rosa is still a very fantastic choice. Rosa's auras still hold up very amazingly. Uh, RCL is another good aura buffer, though her auras are different. And uh, next month, I, be I believe it's next month, there's going to be Offmau. Offmau is another really good aura buffer. Now keep in mind, these are all very drastically different aura buffers. I would highly recommend you check out you guys to check out their auras and see which ones you would need a lot more. But these are definitely some uh, alternative characters if you need an aura buffer. For debuffs, his main debuffs are poison and defense down. I think for poison specifically, I think Sarah still holds that position, uh, still holds that stance really nicely. She still does that poison, that attack down, that framed poison. She's still very solid for that double poison tick. And uh, he does some nice magic. Alfie does some nice magic damage, but if really I wouldn't use him exactly for magic damage. So uh, if you're using him for magic damage, then alternate characters, pretty much any other magic DPS can work. Ultimisha, Ultimisha Emperor, uh, Papa Limo, pretty much any other magic DPS character can still work. DPSs are very flexible in terms of who you bring. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with 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 most of what you said there. I think I think off and on it can really help you out if you need um, because he, d despite his main kind of boost to the party being his auras uh, and being that kind of support type character, he can hit some really nice numbers, uh, especially if you pair him with some battery characters to ensure that he's getting a nice healthy dose of brave back constantly from his blade, uh, his brave plus or his ex. Um, I really do think he compares favorably uh, to kind of like like I mentioned earlier, like Ramza, where uh, they, or Arciela, where they have these auras on them, and they kind of mind their own business, and they let the party do their thing. So Alfie really, I, I think he pairs well uh, with, with so many characters, because mm -hmm. he can do his thing, he can provide some supplemental healing, you know, he has his auras, um, and he has you know the splash damage, he has some AoE to him, so it's really nice. Uh, I really do like that. And then, like you mentioned, he's got the defense down and the poisons. You know, the defense down is kind of weak. I think it's a 30 or a 40% drop. 30% down. Yeah, 30%. Yep. Yeah. But you can stack that again. You can stack that with frame defense drops. And we have a couple. We have what well, we were just talking about. Ultimisha is a good pair for him. Ultimisha has that frame defense drop on her uh, S2. Uh, Ramza has a frame defense drop on his EX. So you can really stack, um, you know, that defense drop. Um, with with some framed character framed uh, defense drop characters and do some really nice things now If you wanted to do something crazy you could pair like Alphano with Sarah and have a triple poison effect going and Then the bosses unless they batter themselves up the bosses aren't gonna have like anything more than zero brave like every single turn That's a little silly 
but they actually do function pretty well together. Uh, so that's definitely an option. But yeah, I think I definitely think that moving forward, um, you know, and, and something to keep in mind, everyone, is we aren't that far from burst era. We are pretty damn close. I think we're what two months. Two months. Ish? Two months away. And Next month is the last EX only month, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And, and so. With every character coming up, I really think, you know, you guys need to ask yourselves, is this character I'm drawing for offer something new, or is this filling a hole in my roster? Because Burst Era is coming up, and we get the LD weapons, which have a pity um, amount of 75,000 gems, and then the Burst weapons, which are 125,000 gems. So, you know, we're not we're not playing in the kiddie pool anymore. You know, we're going to be diving in head first. And so um, I would highly encourage you guys, like Alfie said earlier, uh, to do some side research on your own, DissidiaDB.com uh, is a terrific resource for that, and it uh, you know it lists auras and potencies and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But I would I highly encourage you guys to do your own research here moving forward because it's so so important. Because resources are about to get so much more important here <laughs> very soon. Absolutely, um, and another another great resource is the Tom Bader Troops infographics. Heck, I use their infographic for references to figure out the specific percentages of Alfie's auras because he just has so much. They're also another really good resource to look into. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I want to do give a big thank you uh, to Inkweller from the troop because he provided me with some uh, very helpful data um, uh, for this collab. Um, they, they do great work. But I do think Alpha Known, with all that being said, and you know, Burst Hero being right around the corner, I do think he is worth a draw if you're interested in him because he does kind of offer some unparalleled damage and longevity, uh, especially on a hybrid character. You know, he's not, I don't think you can classify him as a magic DPS. I don't think you can classify him purely as support. He's a very good example of a hybrid, and he does a lot of things well. Um, and he offers tremendous flexibility. So I would highly encourage you guys to take that all into consideration when you're thinking about building him. And of course, as usual, if you like the character, just pull for them. You always pull oh, whoever you like. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I 3 3 Sync, and Sync is dummy thick, and um, <laughs> slows herself down every single turn. And I just, I can't help it. I just couldn't help it. So, favorites trump all. If he's a favorite, of course, draw for your favorite book wielding Scion. Um, and yeah, so... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the liberty of, of answering this big question, Alfie. I know everyone is wondering this, and I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. Are you going to draw on this banner? I know you're not a big fan of Final Fantasy XIV, but this <laughs> kit seems pretty solid, so let me know your thoughts. No. No, nah, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Of course I'm pulling for him. <laughs> that, that, that no there. That, I, I, I dropped my paper. I was holding I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm going to be going for both of them. because I, Again, I love Final Fantasy XIV. I mean, needless to say that, uh, going for both Alfie and Ida, Ida because she's also least, but yeah, going definitely going to be going hard on that banner. Yeah, I, I figured as much, yeah, but yeah, he, he definitely has a lot to offer. Uh, me personally, to, yeah, so I had, you know, back uh, when I was still a wee lad and I had big dreams of moving to the big city, uh, my stream recap, uh, I emphatically said, yes, I am building Alpha Nod. I cannot wait. To build him he is going to be a great part of my roster and then a week later um i started looking at my ingots and i started sweating a little bit and then i 3 3 cypher who i was not originally planning on 3 3 and then i 3 3 fujin who i was planning on 3 3 and then it left me in a position where oh god i can 3 3 zidane this month and that's it so i i am going to hit this banner a little bit because i would love to get both alfie and ida zx's but I think the best I can do right now is that one out of three on Alfie because those party ores are just so good and he's going to have to be a DE man for me, unfortunately. But I would love to build him sad, for sad sure at days. some point. Needless, needless to say, I'm going for the full double purple. And then uh, after that, I am screwed on ingots. <laughs> oh, well, hey, join the party, my friend. We are, we are both in uh, trouble in paradise right now. <laughs> Again, that just about uh, wraps up our discussion about Alpha No. As you can tell, it's a very, very loaded kit. There was a lot to discuss. Even just discussing his S1 took a lot, a lot of time. Uh, is there anything you, uh, anything uh, you want to mention, Soul? Any last notes? Any final thoughts? Uh, well, uh, first and foremost, thank you for having me, man. This was uh, this was fun. This is a true pleasure. I like I like doing these collabs. And hey, for for everyone that doesn't know, this was Alfie's first official collab with Voice. 
and I think he did pretty yep. well. So, so make sure to give him a dislike on the video and unsubscribe. <laughs> um, and no, just regarding Alpha Nod, the, the character, not the cosplayer. Um, the character is very, very flexible. He's very, very versatile. He's the best way to look at him is a hybrid. He's a hybrid support slash DPS. And he does require some thought to use. If you're not a big fan of characters that you have to uh, consider, you know, kind of in advance what to do, then you might not like him because, again, he's he's very dependent on not being broken. And if he keeps getting broken, then he's going to be he's going to be a liability to your squad. So I do think, though, you know, with us getting close to Burster, I do think he's a nice investment. And there you have it. Thank you, Soul, for joining me on this wonderful collab. This is this has been a very wonderful experience, and hopefully, this guy, this collab, help you guys out, help you all uh, think about Alfie a little bit more. And uh, yeah, again, this is Soul. Uh, he does a lot of wonderful global videos, and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. And I believe that just about wraps it up. Yeah, I think so. All right, everyone. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Alpha, for having me. And I guess we'll see you guys again here uh, very soon. Yeah. See you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>